Revival is best during times of crisis. Revival is best during times of crisis. That's what I'm going to speak about. Because I am believing that the times we are living in, they are very prophetic times. And I want to believe that whatever is happening around us, even at this time, the world is at a lockdown. Um, uh, this is the best time that God is dealing with his people. And I give God the glory that we should be living, we should be alive at this time of the year. We should be alive at this time. Hallelujah. There is no any other better time that we could have been alive apart from this time. And this is the time God is preparing his people for a great move. God is preparing his church for a great transition. And God is preparing his church to move to the next era. As I said one time, I want to define era another time, that an era is a new dispensation that has never been seen, never been heard. It's a new period in life that has never been and shall ever, never be. You see, the Bible says when time has come, Jesus was born. It is the fulfillment of the prophetic timings of God that brings in a new era. And I believe even this time that the world is at a lockdown, I am believing in Jesus' name that uh, my God, my Father, is preparing us for a great move. Today I want to walk with you, um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3 and chapter 4. And uh, I will start with the chapter 4, verse 18, where the Bible says, Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. They called them, you know, and commanded them not to teach or to preach. Can it? I believe this is uh, striking some chords, you know, with the lockdown in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the world today. They were forbidden that they should not speak or preach or meet. You see, um, uh, out of choice, churches are uh, not meeting at this particular time because of the crisis of coronavirus. And, uh, but I want to take it as a demonic manipulation spirit that has been released by demons of all over the world. I want to say this is a plan of the devil. For I believe the word of God says very clearly that diseases and infirmities comes from the devil. They are as a result of a curse of, of the devil. And Jesus came to save us from the curse of diseases and infirmities. I believe the Bible, which shows us very clearly that God, he is the one that healeth all our diseases. Also, the Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So by that, I want to believe that one of the enemy that Jesus came to fight and one of the enemy that God wanted us to be um, um, helped by the death of Jesus is the enemy of disease and infirmities. And I believe diseases and infirmities come from the devil. And so coronavirus, any other virus, it's a manipulation of the devil. I believe it in Jesus' name because that's what the Bible shows. So I believe whatever is happening right now, it is a warfare. It is the devil who planned that the world will be in a lockdown. Now, I want to say that whenever the devil plans for evil, God plans good for us. Whenever, I repeat again, whenever the devil plans evil, God is on the other side preparing for us. And we want to see the Bible, we see this uh, um, um, uh, reference of uh, the disciples when uh, after Jesus died and was taken up. And uh, the Bible says in uh, chapter 3, even there, verse 1, that uh, one day Peter and John were walking to go to the temple. And at the door of the temple was a cripple that uh, was there for many years. And he was there um, asking people to give him money. And when he saw Peter... That is the verse 6. When he saw Peter and John coming, he raised up his eyes expectantly. And Peter uh, looked at him and he said to him, look at me, silver and gold have I none. But what I have is what I have to give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Immediately, 
his knees, his ankles, the bones started to crack. They got strength and he stood up. He started to jump. The Bible says he started to jump, limping and jumping and shouting and glorifying God. He ran with them into, into, the, into the temple. And when the cloud saw this, they all ran to Peter and John to come and witness what this has happened. The Bible records that thousands of people came to see this miracle. But on the other hand, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 2 that this disturbed the leaders of the religion of that time. Verse 1 says the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus' name the resurrection of the dead. Now, when this cripple was healed, everybody was attracted to Peter and John. And jo Peter had an opportunity to speak to them about the truth of the gospel. He started with them by giving them references of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Isaac, J Abraham, I mean the God of Abraham, um, uh, um, Isaac, and Jacob, how he promised, how he glorified Jesus, whom the people of Israel handed um, to Pontius Pilate and he was killed. And this really touched the people. They were all quiet, I can imagine. You know, in that court, everybody was quiet. Only Peter was speaking. And the words were hitting hard right inside the bottom of their heart. And those hearts were piercing, as the Bible says. They were pierced by the word of God. You know, wakadungwa, by the word of God. And the leaders of, uh, the religious leader were not very amused. They were not very happy. And they came. They arrested Peter took them out of the cloud of people. But the Bible says, this clip was still clicking to them. And they said, the leaders of the, of the, um, of, uh, of the religion, they said, we forbid you not to speak again about Jesus, not to speak about the resurrection of the dead. And now Peter replied to, to the leaders, and he said, wonderful words that we know. If you are telling us to stop speaking about, if you are asking us by what power this man has been healed, this man has been healed through the power of Jesus, whom you gave out to the Romans, and he was crucified. He died and he rose again. And like he was telling them, and here is uh, the testimony. And here is the show up. Now, verse 13 of uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 is wonderful. I said we are going to walk chapter 3 and chapter 4. Yeah, just to catch up on um, the, what God has put in my heart. Chapter 4 and verse 13. When these religious leaders, they saw the courage in Peter and John. And they realized they were unschooled. They were just ordinary men they were astonished because the gospel comes to overrun the ignorance of people. It comes also to overrun the wisdom of men. The gospel of Jesus comes to uplift those who are down in the dustbin to dine with the kings. The gospel of Jesus releases a wisdom that comes from God. It's not about the school you have gone. It's about the revelation through the Holy Spirit. And when the religious leaders, they looked at what has just happened, they were amazed. They were astonished. To see that Peter and John, they knew them. They were just ordinary fishermen. But the way they were speaking the word of God, having not gone to the schools of the Sadducees and the, uh, and, and the, and, 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 and the other priests, now they were exposing the word of God and showing clearly, bringing out, Great revelation. Hallelujah. And this, this thing astonished the religious leaders. The other thing, verse 14, is that 
they saw the crippled man whom they knew for a long time. He was over 40 years. That's what the Bible says. He has been sitting on this pavement, entering the temple for many years. They knew him. They have always every morning passed him there. And maybe they had given uh, some money to him. But now this cripple was standing with his two uh, feet in front of them, next to Peter and, and next to John. And now it was impossible to deny the power of God. It was impossible to deny that God is working with the, with the apostles. So they ordered them to withdraw. They ordered Peter and John to withdraw and they were left in this uh, small confidential meeting. And what happened? They argued among themselves. But in verse 18 of Acts chapter 4, they called them back and they commanded them not to preach or to teach in the name of Jesus. But G Peter and John replied, judge for yourself today. Now we see boldness in Peter and John. They say, judge for yourself whether it is right to obey God or to obey you and your religion. For we cannot help speaking about that which, have, which we have seen and what we have heard. Now, you, I'm painting this picture. I'm painting this picture for you to be able to catch up with what God has put in me. Then, after they were released by the religious leaders, they went into um, the homes of uh, their brethren and there they prayed. But I want to say that the Bible shows very clearly that from this time, tribulation started to work against the disciples. Acts chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible says, And Saul was there giving approval to his death. This is the death of St Stephen. Because from that point you have just read um, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 and chapter 4, then the Jews, the religious leaders, leaders started now to plan how to destroy the followers of Jesus. And the Bible says they got hold of Stephen, who was a good man, one of the disciples. They stoned him outside Jerusalem until he died. And Saul was there giving approval to the death of Stephen. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. And all except apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. So we see a persecution begins. And remember what the religious people say, we don't want you to preach. We don't want you to meet. We don't want you to congregate in the name of Jesus. Does this uh, strike a chord with us today in the world today when the world is at a lockdown? But I praise the Lord. It was a time like this one of lockdown in Jerusalem when the disciples could not congregate. They could not move on the street to preach. They could not move to the temple to teach. They could not perform miracles. They could not do crusades. They were locked in. And above that, they were being hunted up and down by the religious people to be killed. They got hold of Stephen. The Bible says a, a good man who feared the Lord. They stoned him to death. And Saul, who later became Paul, was there giving approval. I want you to understand. It was a time worse than now when the churches cannot meet, when fellowships cannot meet, when evangelism cannot be held anywhere. If I have seen something um, uh, um, bad or something that has been working against the church is what is happening in the world today. It's as if all the government in the world are against any religious gathering and they are putting stress, I mean, they are stressing on it and people have been beaten not only in my country but in other 
countries have been looking at uh, what was have been, have been happening in, in India and other places where when people congregate, they are beaten by police, they are taken out into jail just because they congregate. I want to say this to challenge even the policymakers. They give conditions or rather favorable conditions for people to be on, in the marketplace. As we know here in our country, Kenya, you know, you go to the marketplace. I was the other day uh, in our market. Thousands of people are, are mingling, I mean, intermixing up and down, walking up and down, doing their business. But yes, keeping distance. Yes, wearing masks. Yes, putting, um, 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 washing their hands. But the church is not allowed those, uh, that dimension. The church is no. The church is no. But I want to let everybody know, it is when the church is locked down, it is when God works marvelously. Revival is based during times of crisis. When the church is put into suffering, it is also when God raises up his generals, as I said other, another day, that generals are born during times of crisis. Moses was born during times of crisis in Egypt. Jesus was born during time, times of crisis in Jerusalem when all the kids were being killed. Oh, hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. Revival is released into the church during this time. We can only take an example from Acts of the Apostles before we pray. It is times of revival. or rather times of crisis, that the hearts of men are drawn more to God during times of crisis. It is times of crisis when the hearts of people are drawn to God. And when they are drawn to God, several things happen. During that time of crisis, they develop unquenchable passion of God. They develop unquenchable passion passion of God. What is happening in the world today is that people are developing unquenchable passion and relentless passion, a drive that is driving them to love God more than ever before. During times of crisis, it is the time that the hearts of people are drawn unto God. And when they are drawn unto God, the second thing is that people start seeking God and his righteousness. They start seeking God and his righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Number three, it is during when people are locked down. That is the church when it is locked down. And their hearts are moved towards God. It is when people develop pain in prayer. They develop a, a, a heart of prayer that is released painfully. And it is that pain in that prayer that gives birth to um, godly purposes. It is like this time that uh, Hannah prayed in the temple with a lot of pain because she was in crisis. Here is her co-wife Penina abusing her. Here is the community which believes if you don't have a child, you are cast. There she was under great pain. So she comes into the temple in the book of 1 Samuel. She cries. Her husband tries to give her food. I mean, the best choice of meat, but she doesn't take it. She cries unto God. She cries unto God with the pain, with the pain. Because she was barren. The Bible says she was barren. She, she developed what I should call here bad pains, pains like that of a woman when she's about to give uh, birth. Look at uh, Isaiah 26. This was another time, time of crisis when the kings of, kings of the nations had attacked the kingdom of God, the Israelite. And Hezekiah the king felt so much venerable. Hezekiah the king felt that his kingdom is going to be destroyed. And so he sent a message to Isaiah in Isaiah 26. And when they come to Isaiah, 
This is the message. Rather, Isaiah 37. This is the message that they gave. Isaiah 37 verse 3. They told him, this is what Hezekiah says. This day is, is, a, is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace. As when children come to the point of giving birth and there is no strength to deliver them. So we need you, Isaiah, to pray because prayer releases a power that gives birth to godly purposes. We can see this in Isaiah 26 and verse 17. The Bible says, Isaiah 26 and verse 17, as a woman with a child and about to give birth, reads and cries out in her pain, so are we in your presence, O Lord. When we come before the Lord, we need to develop a pain like um, this pain that a woman undergoes when he's about to give birth. Hallelujah. This is the type of pain that is needed. Now sometimes God allows us to go through some difficulties with the purpose that our minds will be drawn back to him, that our attention will be drawn back to him. Not because we have sinned. And this is part of what we have been talking in the whole of this month, the mysteries of God. Why should God allow? Why should God allow pain and situations like this one until people die, until business go down? We may not understand for the wisdom of God is far much above the wisdom of God. Actually, the Bible says that the peak of the wisdom of men is all foolishness before God. The peak I'm putting it in my, in my own words, the words are in, in the book of 1 uh, Corinthians. The wisdom of men is foolishness before God. So also we may not be able to understand. The Bible says, who can search out the wisdom of God? Who can search out the wisdom of God? And this pain, when it comes, it opens up a door for us. And also it releases a power in us that propels us. To a, mo to, a, to a mode of seeking God. It propels us to turn around to start seeking God. It is when people are in crisis that they begin to seek God with a pain than ever before. And it is through this pain that God releases his righteous purpose. It was during that pain that Hannah gave birth to Samuel. It was during such a pain that a woman of God in the, the book of Luke chapter 1 called Hannah, Anna rather, Anna, and a man called um, Simon. They dwelt in the temple praying day and night until Jesus was born. Their prophetic commission was to generate birth pains that will uh, release the prophetic among all the purposes of God. For in every, in every crisis that God's allow, there is hidden an agenda that men don't receive it on the street. They receive it in their closet of prayer. Men don't, don't receive it when they are sitting idly. They receive it when they turn unto God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It is times of crisis that we see the apostles. Now they come together. They pray. Acts of the apostles. Chapter 4. We see their prayer. Let us read their prayer. It will be wonderful reading their prayer. On their release, that is, Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. They said like this, Sovereign Lord, they said, You made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servants, our father David. Why do the nation range and the people plot in vain? You can see the tone 
of the apostles now. This pain is in them. They are wondering why should it happen like this. But as I said, the wisdom of God is wiser. And no, no man can be able to understand it until they come unto God, broken down, hallelujah, to the level that the human body, human mind is, mis is re replaced by the Spirit of God until man comes and break before God and make some declaration to demonstrate their allegiance to God. Until man comes to God and God can look at their heart and he can see the humbleness in their heart. That is what releases the wisdom of God to men. And that is what the, the disciples now are undergoing. It's as if they are in a maternity, the place of giving birth, the, the house of prayer. Hallelujah. Now they say, why do the nations range and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against the anointed one. Verse 27. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. That's another wonderful. Now these disciples are praying. They are recognizing the hand of God and the wisdom of God in the death of Jesus. And they said, these people, they did what you had programmed, what you have decided from time immemorial. Verse 29. Now, Lord, consider their threat and enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and to perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God more boldly. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We see after this prayer, that was coming right from the bottom of their heart, piercing their human spirit. It's as if their human spirit was bleeding with the pain. But the Bible equalizes that one with the birth pain. It's like when a woman has gone to the maternity to give birth. She must struggle, she must push, she must go under pain until that child is born. Now God releases the church into situation we are calling crisis for a righteous purpose and one of the righteous purpose is for revival. The above apostolic prayer changed, number one, it changed the environment. It changed the environment. Verse 31 of Acts 31, after they prayed the place where they were meeting was shaken. We see the same thing happened in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 that when the disciples came together and they prayed together the Bible records in Acts of the Apostles in verse 4 that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Hallelujah. Not only that, on top of each one of them, verse 3 says, they saw what seems to be like tongues of fire that separated and came down to rest on each of them. The atmosphere, I'm talking of the atmosphere. Before the, the result of the Bible, God releases pain through crisis. I believe what the world is going through. It has ignited prayer. There is no time in my life. I have seen the world come up to speak about the help they can get in Jesus. It's not common to see presidents, prime ministers, turning back to God in public. Thousands of people praying together. Although there is a lockdown, but in homes, 
Thousands of people are praying every day. Today, this time is not about waiting on Sunday. Every day, people are praying. And I want to let you know, if you don't know, the prayers that are being made in this crisis, they are not normal prayers. These are not prayer that you pray looking at your watch. People are engaging in the presence of God. And one thing is that it is changing the atmosphere. It is changing the atmosphere. I believe it in Jesus' name. The Bible says the place that they were meeting, it was shaken. The place that the disciples were meeting in Acts chapter 2, it was shaken. The fire of God came down. Everybody saw the manifestation of the presence of God. And I believe in Jesus' name. Before too long, we are going to start to see great things happening in church. We are going to see great things happening in this world. Things are going to change in this world. I want to tell you, the foundation of the devil is being shaken. The foundation of idolatry in countries that don't recognize the name of Jesus. Now they are hearing the whole world speaking about Jesus. Now they are hearing the whole world speaking about Jehovah. Now they look so irrelevant in their faith. They look so irrelevant in their faith. It's because during this time, the Holy Spirit is charging our atmosphere with a godly atmosphere. And the Bible says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a time that we don't only speak about the Holy Spirit. It is the time of the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus. That time is coming when the true worshippers will be worshipping God in truth and in spirit. This is the time that we are going to see the manifestation of the Spirit of God as it was in the apostolic time, as it was during Peter's time, as it was during Paul's time. I want to let you know, if you are a Christian and you have not been caught up in this pain because of the crisis that we are going in, I want to let you know you'll be left out. My God will jump you over. Make sure you are not left out. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes this pain that uh, we develop in prayer, sometimes it is initiated by crisis, but sometimes we look around and try to understand and join up with other people. Even if I don't understand, but I want to join with the body of Christ. What is happening this time? What is happening this time? It is not crusades. What is happening this time? It is not the normal service where we go and read liturgies. What is happening this time? We have been scattered and locked down in our homes so that each one of us will seek the name of his God, as the Bible says in the book of, of, of Job. Each one of us will walk in the name of his God. This is the time like the prophet Amos spoke about. And he urged the people, seek the Lord and you shall live. This pain is being released. But also on the other hand, I want to challenge the Christian. It is time to seek the Lord. Amos 5 verse 6. Seek the Lord and live. Or he will sweep through the house of Joseph like fire. It will devour and, Be and Bethel will have no one to quench it. Seek the Lord and live. Because the next thing that this pain is releasing is the fire of God upon the idolatrous nations. I want to let you know, after this crisis of coronavirus, churches will sprout. I want to let you also know beforehand, as an apostolic leader, I know what God has been speaking. And also, I'm able to see in the spirit God raising up men and women on a level you did not expect. I was meditating seriously on this word. One of the most frightening things on this point now I'm speaking is that when crisis came, it is the time that the Holy Spirit reached out his hand and raised up Saul of Tarsus. We just read in uh, um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 that he was there when they were killing Stephen. And he gave approval. But he didn't know what the heaven is planning. 
He didn't know because of the prayer of the apostles. Painfully they were praying. They were locked in house. The religious leaders had said, don't move out. Don't preach in the name of Jesus. Don't congregate. But he did know. He ignited a passion in them. He ignited a hunger in them. He ignited a thirst in them to seek the Lord. For seeking the Lord is the formula of living. As the Bible says in the book of Amos. During a times like this one, the formula is seeking God in prayer. Seeking God in meditating. Number two, seeking God in meditating on his word. Meditation, the Bible says, Psalms 119, that it makes us to be much wiser when we meditate on the word of God. What people don't know, this time that the church has been locked down, it is the time that the church is developing because people have time to meditate on the word of God. The Bible says, Psalms 119, Verse 97, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all the day long. Your command makes me wiser than my enemy, for they are ever within me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. Now, th three, four things here. It is a time like this one, when people turn their hearts towards God. Can somebody say amen? I like that. When people turn their hearts towards God. And I said, one of the things that happens, people develop a hunger, a thirst of seeking God. And how do they seek God? In prayer. Number two, in meditation. Meditation is allowing your mind to roll with the truth of the word of God. It's to think intently is to think intently about spiritual truth. That's what is biblical meditation. There are other meditation in the world, but I'm talking about biblical meditation. We meditate on the power of God. We meditate on uh, the salvation of God. We meditate on the love of God. Oh, how God loves me. Oh, how I love him. When we do this, the Bible says we become wiser than our enemies. What is, the devil doesn't know is that the church is becoming wiser than before. By the end of this lockdown, you will see teachers of the word. You will see re people speak of revelation than ever before. The other thing, we develop an insight. When we meditate on the word of God, we develop an insight. We are able to see revelation. What is going to happen to the church for those people who are walking on this path that I'm talking about? When you seek the Lord, you develop an insight. God opens up your inner eyes to see. It's like what Paul prayed for the Ephesians in chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians. Verse 19 and 18, 19. That I pray the Lord, of the, the, Lord the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may give you a spirit of revelation. Revelation is an to have an insight. When you see black, you understand what is in that black. When you see red, you understand what is in that. When you see a wall, you can see the other side. It's the ability to understand spiritual truth. So the church is going to develop a power and a, you know, an ability for spiritual truth. The other thing, you Start having understanding. Verse 10. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I may obey your command. What people will do now, when they seek the Lord, they will know him better. And when they know him better, then those people start walking on the path of God. So I'm really enjoying the lockdown. And I'm trying to utilize the times of the lockdown to read my Bible more, to meditate more, to pray more. Hallelujah. What the people in Jerusalem did not know. That the church of Jesus has thrived in the homes. To develop a power. To generate a spiritual power. Hallelujah. Not, what they did not understand. Is that power that was being generated. 
was to be released into the world. And Saul of Tarsus, soon and very soon, he was caught up. From Acts of the Apostle chapter 8, we move to Acts of the Apostle chapter 9. Then we see, right from verse 1, 2, 3, 4, we see how Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, met Jesus on the way, going to persecute the church, going to arrest the brethren. Let me tell you something. It is a time like this one that God will stretch his hand upon our enemies. It is a time like this one that I believe God will touch the unbelievers in a very powerful way. Christians who profess the name of Jesus, I want to ask you to be careful. If you become sluggish, you may be bypassed by people like Paul. And as I said, I've been meditating on this sort of uh, atmosphere that was there in Jerusalem. And what was amazing is to see how Paul, how, when he was called, the sort of spiritual thrash that he received, the power that propelled him to move even with a velocity much higher than the apostles that were with Jesus. We see Paul accomplishing such great things. We thank God for that. But on the other hand, I don't want to be bypassed. I don't want to be bypassed. I want to be in the team. I want to be like Barnabas. Barnabas was not bypassed. God gave him to understand the anointing of God upon Paul. And the Bible says he went to look for Paul in Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. He went to look for Saul and brought him to Antioch. Barnabas, he saw something that was not in Jerusalem. He saw it in Antioch. I want also to bring to you, it is a time like this, in this crisis, that God moves in territories that you did not imagine. The disciples could not, were not prepared rather, that God will move to Antioch, to the nations, and there in the nation, he shall do signs, wonders, and miracles. So I believe there will be sprung up of churches in China, in Russia, in nations that are, does not acknowledge Jesus Christ. Jesus must have a way like he smashed his way. We call them gate crashers. He crashed his way upon the life of Saul when he was going for mission to arrest and kill the, the children, I mean the disciples. But on the way, check God crashed on him, and rather Jesus crashed on him. And it's as if he was so wise he understood. When he was, he was uh, pushed down by the power, Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 verse 3, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Soul, soul, why do you persecute me? Verse 5, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. I just read this for you to understand, you know, how Jesus crashed. And this is how Jesus is going to crash in areas that you, less, you least expect. This is how Jesus is going to raise people among us. People we did not imagine they can be raised. I want to tell you it is a time of this, a time like this one, of great crisis, that in Jerusalem, my God, my Father, crashed into areas that he was not invited. He stretched his hand into palaces where they went to, to hear the, the gospel. Sign wonders and miracles were performed in palaces when Paul and Barnabas, they left Antioch. The Bible records in Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 13, verse 6. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and, and, a, and a false prophet named Bar Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and so because he wanted to hear the word of God. Ooh, hallelujah. So you see the gospel now moving into palaces, palaces seeking men of God. 
I need somebody to say amen. I, see, I feel so much moved by God. I, I feel moved by what God is going to do. I, see, I feel moved by the results that God is going to, to release. Hallelujah. So I want to summarize and say, I believe God is doing something through us and in us. But we need to respond to the situation by developing an intimacy, a love through constant worship, constant meditation, constant meditating on the word of God, constant prayer. We need to develop unquenchable thirst and hunger for the Lord. As the Bible says in Psalms 42, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with him? This is what I'm calling unquenchable desire, unquenchable thirst. David says in Psalms 27, but for one thing I desire, one thing I seek, we must develop that mobility of seeking the face of God, as we say. We must develop that passionate desire of God. David says in Psalms 80, 84 verse 10, better one day in the courts of God than a thousand days and everywhere else. That's a demonstration of his desire. Like in Psalms 27 verse 4, one thing I desire, one thing I seek, I declare in Jesus' name that during this season, my God, my Father, is going to change the atmosphere that the church works through. There is going to be revival from individuals to the nation of the world. There is going to be a revival. God is going to usher in people we did not expect, people we least expected. God is going to mobilize his church because Acts chapter 8, that when the tribulation came to Jerusalem, they were all scattered abroad. I believe God is going to use men and women to reach out to the whole world. This is the time God is preparing on the final re um, evangelistic revival when sign wonders and miracles shall be the order of the day. I want to say, That this is the time that God is preparing the hearts of people in the lockdown. When people are locked in, don't think that the church is sleeping. The church is not the houses. When the apostles were forbidden to come to the temple, when they were forbidden to go to the marketplace, it's when all these things I've been saying came to happen. That's the revelation from God. I'm excited that I'm living at this age. My God, I don't want to be left behind. I want to pray in Jesus' name that none of us will be left behind. That none of us will be left behind. I pray for a special connection, just like God connected Barnabas and Paul for that revival into the nation. I pray for a special connection. Oh, I pray for myself. I pray for every minister. And I pray in Jesus' name that the evil spirit of manipulation, religious spirit that functioned in Jerusalem will not function in the church today. That the religious leaders we shall be left behind when God is moving in villages, when God is moving in the grassroots, when God is moving in the nations. But I pray in Jesus' name that we shall be able to move with the move of God. It begins by our prayer. It begins by our small grouping in prayer where two or three are gathered. I want to encourage now that we cannot gather in big groups. The Bible says when Peter was in prison, the church was praying in the house. In the house. The prayer we have just read in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. They met in the house. 
So I believe something is happening in the house. Something is happening in homes. And I pray for all people that are praying at home. I pray for a spirit of revelation. May God reveal himself upon your life. I pray for people who are doing watches 24-7. I pray for all MISPA uh, family members that are engaged in 24-7 programmer of watches and prayer. Wherever you are, my brother, wherever you are, my sister, I pray that this grace that is working in this crisis, that it shall never leave you out in the mighty name of Jesus. That the power of God shall be upon your life wherever you come to pray. Whether you are one, you are two. It is only you and your children. It's only you and your husband and your children. It's only you and your wife and your children. I want to let you know the presence of God as it was in Jerusalem. It shall come upon your life. I pray, the Bible says, as the Bible says, that house, the power of God came down. Shook the house. The atmosphere changed. I pray for you. Whenever you meet to pray, may the Holy Spirit come down in that room. May the Holy Spirit come down. May the power of the Holy Spirit visit you. From every house I pray, may my God release missionaries. In every home I pray, may there sprout out another church to the nations. During this time of lockdown, let it be like it was in Jerusalem. When they were forbidden to meet, when they were forbidden to go out, that is the time, that is the time that the spirit of revival was released. And God brought in people from the nations. He brought soul from the north. And he became a great tool. May my God, my father, release somebody from your family to go to the nations in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name that people will receive a revelation that my God, you release a revelation in the hearts of people. That my God, oh, you shall release a revelation in the hearts of people in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God, my Father, this time, this season of lockdown, this time of crisis, my God, my Father, you are releasing the power to heal, the power to raise the dead. As you said during the last time, you shall release your Holy Spirit. That shall be moving over the land just as the water fills the sea your holy spirit will fill up every corner and i pray god my father release that power as you released it in jerusalem acts the apostle chapter 8 verse 1 to the bible says the disciples were scattered all over the world some went to antioch and from antioch you spread the gospel to the world i pray even from this mountain of mispa release the apostolic calling to everybody, every home that is praying this season, this time. That Father in every home, you shall release a prophet, you shall release an evangelist, you shall release a pastor, you shall release out of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray for many people who are like so. Today they are abusing the church. Today they are scolding the church. But I pray in Jesus' name, Father, meet them at the prophetic point. Father, I pray that the power of God comes down like lightning to strike them, not to kill them, but to transform them. From that day, Saul met God. He was struck by the light of God. He was transformed. I pray for a transformation even from this nation, Kenya, and the nations of the world. We pray, Father God, for brethren in China, that your hand will be together with them. Even at this time of lockdown, Father, you shall spiritually energize them. Release a power of sign wonders and miracles. I pray for churches in Europe. I pray for churches in Asia. 
I pray, Father, for prophetic countries like Norway, Norway, that, Father, you shall release men and women in these prophetic times that the world is locked down, that after this, the churches will spring like a springboard to jump into the world for revival. Oh my God, my Father, I pray for Britain. I pray for the countries of Africa. That my God, my Father, you shall visit us in a powerful way to release missionaries in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you honor, Lord. We glorify your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to pray in Jesus' name. Because of people who are sick. Some are in quarantine. Others are at home. We pray in Jesus' name that my God, my Father, you shall visit them and heal them. In the name of Jesus. I pray God, my Father, that the power that is generated through prayer that are being prayed this season of this crisis shall touch the sick. We close the doors of death in Jesus' name. We close every purpose of the, devil, of the devil in destruction through death and infirmities in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, for the economies in companies, in countries. For we know you are going to do great things than ever before. Because of the generation of the power in prayer that is happening all over the world. People who have never trusted you, now they are trusting on you. People who have never prayed on you, People who have never called the name of the Lord Jesus, they are calling it now. And because of that, Father, the world is being changed, even economically, in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you as you wait upon God for this great revival in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.